Welcome back to the Bayside Fabrication YouTube channel. Today we're going to work on the second most important piece of this swap. Uh, first was the engine mount. Second is clearance for the valve cover and uh, the engine on the inside of the car. So we're going to hammer out a um, uh, engine cover and I'm gonna show you exactly how that's done. All right guys, check out what we're doing here. We're making our little uh, access hatch here. And I'm just making a template out of cardboard just to see how it's gonna look. And so far, we got it fitting pretty good. So that's kind of my plan. There'll be a flange here. So we'll just screw into the body with some body panel clips or something like that. And I think it's gonna work really well. Here's our template on our sheet metal. Just a little trick that I've done before. Um, I have, had to do a little radius on the back side because the back side where the, the kind of glass ends ish has a little arc to it, not much. So what I do is just I mark out where what the radius needs to be, which in this case it's about three eighths of an inch on either side, and then I, I take my clamps here. And then what I can do is I take this straight edge and when you put it up on edge here, you can get a nice even bow and then mark it that way. So that way, so that way I have our nice, nice radius there and it should come pretty close to what we're uh, trying to achieve. Now you might be wondering why I'm using steel instead of aluminum. I am actually planning on making these out of fiberglass. So this is actually gonna be my mold ideally. And so steel, it's just gonna be a little stronger, a little more, uh, less floppy than, um, you know, a thin aluminum piece. So that's kind of my idea. If I can make this and it comes out and fits really nice, I think just a nice little um, fiberglass option will be a lot easier than having to do these custom bends and dolly and all that stuff for production purposes. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm trying to keep the cost down and everything for people. And to do this all every single time is... Uh, pretty labor intensive. So we're gonna see how well um, this is this fits in here once we start getting a few things bent. And then we'll, uh, once I'm happy with that, we'll brace it up and this will be uh, ultimately a fiberglass mold. So that's my plan. All right, so we've been hammering a little bit and we got this uh, looking pretty good. So it's just, uh, it's actually just about 90 degrees. So I'm gonna give it a test fit to see if the radius works. It actually worked out well too, cause you can kind of see it when you are bending along a radius here, you actually have to kind of shrink it a little bit. But what this does is it kind of bowed the, um, the panel uh, up a little bit, which is actually something we wanted cause it bows like that in the car. So it actually should uh, benefit us, but let's, Let's uh, pop this in and see how it looks. That's actually looking pretty good. I'm gonna leave that for now and get everything else bent up, but that's great. I know it's hard to see in here cause I got like triple tent on this stupid car, but that will allow us to screw at least three screws right in there. And then um, that secures the back and seals the back. That was my biggest concern is being able to seal it because you don't really want any gaps or anything like that in the event there's a fire or something like that. You wanna keep the fire not in the car. So that's the main idea. So any through hole fittings and stuff on firewalls obviously need to have grommets and things like that. But I think that is going to uh, actually work really well. Well, unfortunately this is too wide to put in our, um, our swag bender over there. So we're gonna have to do the old ghetto metal break here. So let's, uh, I've done this before and unfortunately it's not the best way, but on a small piece like this, that's gonna be covered in carpet and stuff anyways, it really doesn't matter.
I've been banging on this thing for a few hours now and we're getting pretty close. So we're uh, ready for a final, almost a final fitment in here. But as you can see, this is not a simple piece to recreate. Um, this is pretty complicated. So, you know, like I said, I'm taking my time on this one and hopefully I can just knock out like a fiberglass piece off this. And then I can just use this as a mold moving forward and just bang out as many as I want once we get the final fit and finish here. And just to show you my cover here, it really fits nice. We did a good job with it. So a couple more things I have to do. I'm going to actually roll a couple beads on this top part to give it some extra stability and rigidity. And uh, that's kind of pretty much be, be the end of it. All right, check it out. This is the final fitment here. Now I got a little wild in this intake manifold and it's way bigger than, uh, or way taller than it should have been. So that was just me getting ahead of myself because I didn't have the motor sold. So I needed uh, to do something while <laughs> I was waiting for that to happen. But there we are with that. Um, I can trim off. I just need to trim off like another quarter inch just on this back side here to fit it. But like I said, our cover goes uh all the way to these mounts here so i actually could trim it back like another inch if i really wanted to but this is plenty plenty big enough opening here so that's gonna be that now the uh positives to this you know i i, I people are like oh well i don't want to cut up my car blah, blah blah well guys if you're doing this uh k swap i mean you're gonna have to do something to your vehicle you can do the custom valve cover modification that, uh, for example, Nick did, and he actually is manufacturing and selling custom valve covers, is that's what you wanna do. So in my opinion, if you absolutely cannot get over the idea of cutting up your car, that's absolutely a great way to go. However, this making this little opening here and then putting a panel on it and then putting carpet back over it, you'll never know. And the benefits to this is, now I have access to all my spark plugs, all my coils, um, a matter of fact, uh, I could probably even use stock coils, but I wound up getting a uh, smart coil that I'll show you in just a minute here that should uh, be work just fine with this. But it also allows you to access your um, uh, fuel injectors, your fuel rail, pretty much everything you can access up here. You can also um, have a dipstick so you can check your oil. Uh, you can fill your oil. I'm going to create an oil fill probably somewhere around here. Um, it kind of sucks having to fill your oil through the uh, inside of the car, but it's just the way this motor and this car rolls at this point. So I'm just going to drop this back down and make some final clearances on um, the sheet metal here, and then we're good. All right. We're back in the car here. First thing is I'm gonna see if I can get a stock coil into that uh, number one cylinder, which I don't believe I can. Nope. So two would fit. Two, three, four fit. So that's kind of a bummer. So for all you guys running stock coils, you're not gonna be able to get that front one in and out, uh, but I have a solution that I'm gonna show you that I already planned on. But let's also see if we can fit our dipstick. Yeah. So our dipstick fits. Let's see if it fits with the cover on. No, dipstick hits, okay. So the dipstick hits, which means um, even a unmodified valve cover would not work with my um, engine cover here. But that's not a big deal. Like, actually, you know what? I could probably just take this dipstick and just shave this cap off. It's a little harder to pull out, but that's an idea. So as I was talking to you guys, I was thinking we could do an Allen screw or something, but I was just thinking we could just cut this, cut the dipstick in half. It'd be harder to pull out, but maybe we can just um, 
put like a key ring or something, you know, drill a hole and put a key ring. And, you know, so it's like a little pull handle. You guys know what I'm saying, right? Just something, something like this. Or even just a fabric threaded, you know what I mean? Just something like that. So yeah, we'll do that. That's a better solution. That way we're not, you know, leaving dipsticks in the, hanging around in the car or whatever. But it's very important to be able to check your oil, obviously. So that's one, one huge plus for this, this deal. Okay, so we were just talking about spark um, coils and you know access to spark plugs and th things like that. And it does still look like we're not gonna be able to get into that uh, first cylinder there. So this is what I bought. Um, they're not the cheapest things, but really they're not that bad either. So this is what we're gonna be running. I'm gonna be running four of these. So these are smart coils. Um, these are AEMs, but they are also known as, what is it, IGN-1As um, smart coils. So essentially what you do is just run a small um, uh, plug wire right into the coil. So now we can mount, you know, we can mount these right here. We can mount them really anywhere. You know, we can mount them, let's go back in the car here yeah i don't think we're gonna be able to mount them there so we're gonna have to mount them on the side but we can also i mean they don't even have to be mounted to the motor we can mount them to the uh the body right here on the underside uh, or really anywhere um, i don't want that long of a plug wire if possible so i'm probably just gonna make some mounts and weld weld them out to the side of the valve cover and have all of these um, just on the exhaust side of the valve cover here and that should be uh, a really good solution. So these are really nice um, I've heard nothing but great reviews on these and this will provide as much spark as we'll ever need for you know High horsepower situations here. So pretty pumped uh, to be using these. Um, They're 70 bucks a piece So, you know 300 bucks all in on these and I still have to buy the plug wires for them so they're not the cheapest thing on the planet, but you know, it is what it is. So the last piece of the puzzle here is to stiffen up this um, cover we have for our engine. Now, I brought out the uh, the old bead roller, which I haven't used in quite some time. So I did a little bead roll on this just to, you know, get pressures and things, and it came out all right. I was mainly testing the X and uh, seeing how the overlap went, which it didn't go well. But the only problem I have is this is kind of an afterthought. So my bead roller can only accept this end through the throat of it. So I can't do really anything other than a couple straight lines this way. Well, this is our final product. It came out pretty good. Um, There's a couple small things. Uh, one is when I beaded it afterwards here, it kind of created a little tension, um, which will be obviously resolved when um, we screw it in, but it wants to naturally kind of oil can itself, which isn't great, but um, it's not a big deal. Uh, I also ran this bead a little bit long here. So this bead just went just a little bit. So I'm going to hammer that out and shorten it back to match here. And other than that, it's pretty good. Um, I wish I really wish I would have just um, had an opportunity to do it beforehand and just do like a basic X in it or something nice and easy. But like I said, man, at the end of the day, it's all about uh, rigidity at this point. And this makes it super strong. It won't vibrate or create any kind of weird noise or anything like that as opposed to just being a single panel here um, without any of the uh, dimple dyeing. And furthermore, it um, it will help uh, add structure to the fiberglass one that I'm going to make. So this is definitely gonna work for now. So the next step is just to drill. I'm gonna drill three holes in the front. We're gonna do two on the side and three in the back. And then we're gonna uh, screw this in and that's gonna be done. Well, that's gonna do it, guys. 
Came out pretty good. Once it's in the car and everything here, it looks like, I mean, it's just something you don't even really notice, so. Like I said, from the beginning, it's gonna be covered with carpet and everything, but I mean, it's it fits good. We're gonna uh, disregard this. See how this piece of sound deadening here looks like it's not level? Well, it is, but I assure you the cover is level. Whoever was at Porsche just stuck it on sideways. So that stuff drives me nuts, but hey, that's what you pay the big money Porsche stuff for, right? So now that we have our engine mount finalized, I'm gonna drop the motor down again, pull the valve cover off and start welding up the valve cover. Well, it's time to get this valve cover buttoned up now that we know everything's gonna fit. So the first step is to make templates, which I did. So uh, I simply just flipped this over and traced the backside onto some cardboard here. This happens to be the Polar Mandarin Seltzer Edition templates. It will simply trace this out to aluminum and that's gonna be it. We got all of our pieces cut now. Very simple. Just make a cardboard template. Transfer it into metal. It's just like Legos for adults and the pieces don't fit together initially so you have to make up your own directions and it's really nothing like Legos actually at all now that I think about it. However, you get the gist. The next step on this is obviously to get welded up, but we also have to add a oil fill, which I just ordered a low profile bung with a cap. So I'm hoping that's gonna fit. And also we need to modify the dipstick handle, which I discussed before. We're just gonna chop it in half and put a little pull ring on it, which should be perfect. And then we have to add our catch can uh, for the uh, valve cover breather. So we're just gonna run two dash tens right here and here and it's gonna be as simple as that so we just started welding the valve cover here and man this uh cast uh alloy aluminum alloy that they use for it is super difficult to weld it's giving me all sorts of problems it's getting a little funny in certain spots so i've had to go out and kind of grind it out and go back a couple times but not great well guys, the valve cover is just about done. I have a couple more uh, small spots and I got welded my AN fittings, but man, this has been fighting me incredibly hard. Um, I, I don't know what the deal is with the cast uh, alloy on this, but man, it is just not cooperating. So there guys, that's a nice normal weld that we just did. And this is how this is going. It's just a real dirty, it's just a real dirty casting, I think. And it works okay if you really limit the heat into it, but as soon as you uh, give it a little voltage, man, it freaking just, it just gets weird. It starts acting funny. The arc starts moving around, like it's weird. I don't know what's going on with it, but there must be all sorts of crap in it. But like I said, we got it down pretty good it's gonna work uh it's probably not gonna be the prettiest deal but it will work now the other solution is drag cartel makes a billet valve cover which is sick and it's exactly like this it's all shaved down um and would work really well uh in this application except it's like twelve hundred dollars so i wasn't really looking at spending twelve hundred dollars on a valve cover but that might be a solution moving forward to uh, potential customers because I don't know about doing this every time. I mean, it's just not the quality that I, you know, put out really. Well, the next solution is mounting our coils. Now, I know I showed you, I got these AEM smart coils. These are 30 uh, 2853s. Um, these are supposed to be really nice coils and they are going to solve our height issue of popping out that first coil. So with that being said, I was thinking something along the lines of this. 
However, now that I'm looking at it, it does not look like it's going to fit that well on my valve cover. They're a little bigger than I thought. Not a problem, because I really don't want to weld to that thing again. Um, just because I'm frustrated with it. So maybe I can just mount them up on the uh, up on the body there. Just make a little bracket and just hang them down. That might be a good good solution. Or I could possibly even mount them on the intake manifold near the fuel rail. Not quite sure. Let's uh, let's get this valve cover leak tested. Um, what I'm going to do is just pour some water into it, hold it upside down, and just see if any water seeps through anywhere. Um, and if water seeps through, that means there's a pinhole or something like that. And if water seeps through, oil will seep, seep through, excuse me. So we don't want that to happen. So um, yeah, let's, uh, let's get that done first, and then we'll figure out uh, coil placement, and we'll get this valve cover back on. I think that's gonna do it for this one, guys. Um, appreciate you following along, and we're just gonna keep on plugging away. We got, in my opinion, all the hard stuff taken care of, so the rest is just fun stuff. Building turbo kits and things like that. I'm not really looking forward to the cooling system on this, or electrical, really, but hey, they gotta get done, so that's on the chopping block. Appreciate watching, guys. Like and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one.